The one aspect we talk about almost every single time when talking about mechanical watches and fine watchmaking in horology is the history of the brand. The history that defines not just manufacturers' experiences but also contribution in watchmaking. And if you believe in the history, we are talking about not one of the, we are talking about the oldest watch manufacturer to exist in the world. Blancpain is not only the oldest watch manufacturer on record, founded in 1735, but is also the first watch manufacturer to offer a diver watch with unidirectional bezel for safety reasons. Born in 1953, 50 Fathoms combined some remarkable features that will make it a pioneer in the diving watch world. This included making not just a watch with high contrast black dial having luminescent hour markers and heads but also a bezel that was able to be locked allowing the divers to check the elapsed time. If you don't already know, fathoms is the unit of measurement for length or let's say the height. The first diving watch by Blancpain was waterproof to the depth of 91.5 meters which converted to fathoms is equal to 50 fathoms. Hence the name of this first diving watch 50 fathoms. Back in the time, this 91.5 meters or 50 fathoms of depth in the water was considered to be the maximum depth that divers can safely reach with time-based use of oxygen mixture. While many would give the title of first modern dive watch to Rolex Submariner, the original crown for that title actually belongs to Blancpain 50 fathoms. The original reference was 41 mm in size, which was already much bigger than typical watches of the time partly to make room for the first of its kind external rotating bezel. This was also the first watch to offer luminous markings on the dial in different shapes to help with quick reading at a glance. To further add to that, there was an inverted triangle at 12 o'clock, rectangles at 3, 6 and 9 o'clock and circular hour markers in between. The reference we are looking at in this video is Blancpain 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe which was released in 2013 to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the brand's first diver watch. The watch featured in this video comes in larger 43mm case size and it does look and wear true to its size. The dial comes in beautiful grey shade which offers spectacular sunburst treatment. I have shown many sunburst dials on my channel and I have to say that the way the sunray lines are defined so clearly on this dial I would even go out to say that this is quite possibly the most refined sunburst style I have ever seen and shown in any diver watches at $10,000 price point. The dial plays with the light and it simply enhances the joy of the wear and ownership of this watch. The dial comes with minimal text alongside small hour markers leaving out the dial with empty space. To some this empty space can be concerning as the dial may look a little flat but to others, and this includes myself, it brings out simplicity, yet giving out maximum space to amazingly treated dial to play with the light. The hour markers come with luminous infill and small circular dots, and this is a design inspiration they have taken from the original 50 fathoms. This time, however, we have these hour markers surrounded by white coal indices, which add up to the overall experience. One more character I will emphasize on is the beveling on the hour markers. And these bevels simply don't exist in any other tool watches including Rolex, Omega or Tudor. The polished bevels on the hour markers again play with the light upon the flick of wrist and while it is a tool watch, they add a bit of jewelry look to the watch. There's a date at 4.30 position and while it does divide the opinions, I find it interesting in a way it allows the dial to maintain its symmetry especially when the lume activates which we will look at shortly and overall the date hibernates until you want to see it and then it's there. True to its tool watch characters, the watch comes with ceramic bezel which is virtually scratch and color fading proof and then true to diving watch, the bezel has graduations all the way through. The bezel action is crisp and the bezel itself is easy to grip but the action unfortunately does have a fair bit of wiggle in it which I was a little disappointed with. When we remember that Blancpain was the first watch manufacturer to offer unidirectional bezel in diving watches, you naturally expect them to produce a bezel with best action in the class. Sadly, that doesn't seem to be the case here. The watch case is fully brushed 
and there is virtually not a single surface that is polished and this complements very well with the tool nature of the watch. The case profile also comes with facets and bevels and the edges are sharp which give the watch a statement and a bold look. The brushing quality is very good and you can see the brush lines and how clearly they are defined. There are no crown guards on the case and this helps with keeping the overall substance of the watch a little more manageable. Inside the case, we have manufacturer in-house caliber 1315 which comprises of 227 parts and 35 jewels to operate at a frequency of 4 Hz and offers crazy 120 hours of power reserve. This is the longest power reserve of any diving watches I have reviewed and this caliber is powering the watches since 2007 so you can easily trust its reliability. The movement is overall very elegant, sleek, simple and good looking. It is one of the most beautiful movements to be seen in any watches under $10,000 mark. The movement comes with bridges that are fully brushed beautifully and then there's polished beveling on all the edges. The screws are all polished too and you can appreciate that there is an effort and time spent in beautifying every component of the movement. The movement offers hacking seconds hand to allow you to set the time accurately but there is no instant date change at midnight and you can see that after 11.30 pm the date wheel starts to get misaligned before it finally jumps over to next date. Being true to diving watch characters, the watch comes with a lume that not only just works, it actually is very consistent, simple and elegant. Thanks to date wheel at 4.30 position, you can see that the lume is also very symmetrical too. The hour and minute hand not just have different length for luminous infill, but also the thickness is different, so it's very easy to read the time. The bezel is not fully lumed, but thanks to lume pip, it is still fully functional. I left the watch in the dark for another 10 minutes and while the hour markers and bezel pip have lost brightness much more than the hands, they are all still legible, so nothing really much to complain. Under the macro, the polished hour hand shows great details and there's no marks or scratches I could spot. But there's also no beveling at the edges, so the manufacturing of these hands is fairly simple and basic. The seconds hand doesn't come with polished or treated underside but on the brighter side this clip shows you how perfectly the top surface of our hand is polished. The minute hand comes with similar finish where we have amazing polish work on display with no issues to be seen. The hour markers come with beveled finish and the surface finish is again impressive and you do notice that from the way they reflect light to even naked eye. There's a minor surface dust on seconds hand which is negligible and the joint overall shows relatively good assembly process, yet there is not much decoration done on it. The paint on seconds hand is overall fine and the edge at transition shows relatively better finish than normal watches, but it again isn't flawless. The dial is where the watch steals the show and even under macro, you can see the continuity and crispness of the sunburst lines and this is exactly why this dial plays with the light like it does. The text is crisp and the white color it comes in works really well with the amazingly treated grey dial. Upon very close inspection, I can however see some discontinuity and imperfection in the dial's brush lines around the date. But this is really something you simply can't spot with naked eye, even after I've mentioned this to you. On the wrist, although the case size is 43mm, yet the watch wears fairly well. My wrist size is 6.5 inches and wrist span is 55mm and you can see that the watch does not protrude out of my wrist and this is because it has a lug to lug height of 50mm which is actually only 1mm taller than Rolex Submariner. The case is also thick at 13.4mm so it is not a small watch by any means but if you like bigger watches it is wearable. The case profile does not quite taper down and the lugs relatively flare out straight and you can see the space between my wrist and the lugs which is one thing I don't quite like about it. And since it doesn't wear as seamlessly on the wrist as some of the other watches, it does concern my personal preference for this watch too. The watch comes with fabric strap which does look very neat and sturdy. The stitching and overall quality is also top notch with the right amount of padding in place. The strap comes with tank buckle that has blanc pan engraved on it and it features fully brushed treatment which does again marry very well with the overall tool nature of the watch. Blancpain 50 Fathoms Patha Skiff 
is a watch with not just a rich history of over 60 years but is also the pioneer of many innovations and design characters that have become synonyms to diving watches. And with all the historical achievements, it comes with the craftsmanship that really shows details in not just the dial and smaller elements like hands and hour markers, but also the movement, every bridge and every screw of it. And then on top of all, it comes in the price where virtually what you get is really only a tool watch. And then it comes from the oldest watch manufacturer on record. It's beautiful, it's iconic, it's historical, it's reliable and it's conversation starter. The only thing it sadly or luckily isn't, it isn't hyped as much as the competition.